हाँ एंड यू विल बी इन द वेटिंग राउंड सो एवरीबडी विल बी इन द वेटिंग एरिया वो लोग सब वेटिंग में ही है एक मनजीत सिंह है अभी कोई नो 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 मैं भाई मैं बहुत टाइम से कर रही हूँ इसमें मैं सिर्फ स्पेसिफिक पीपल सिलेक्ट कर करके अंदर बुलाती हूँ इसीलिए उन सबको बताना होगा कि जब तुम एडमिन बनोगे जब मैं कसिया को एडमिन बनाऊंगी तो मैं सबको अलाउ कर दूंगी और क्वेश्चंस भाई उन्होंने क्वेश्चन क्या पूछे थे be based at that at this campus and there's also fashion here there's graphics and it's right in the center of the town so it's got a nice feel to it you're very close to a lot of amenities and you're really close to London as well which is great then moving on to Rochester so I would say Rochester is my favorite campus um, and that's because it's completely focused on fashion. It's focused on graphics and product design. And it's, it's really buzzy because the students there, they need to be on campus a lot because they'll be working on portfolios. They'll be working on live briefs. They'll be creating, um, you know, works of fashion. Um, and a lot of them will be working for high profile companies in London. So they may be working on a brief for Reese or for Hugo Boss. And so, the students are on campus a lot and obviously with COVID that's been a challenge. We've had to have workshops open a lot a lot longer um, but it's great because when you go there there's students that are busy creating you know really exciting fashion projects um, and it's just got a, a really great feel to it and it's also it's easy to get to London um, and that's why Rochester's really worked on creating really strong links with companies in London especially those high profile fashion and graphic companies. And then lastly, we have Canterbury. So the nice thing about Canterbury is in, it's in a city um, and it's got some really beautiful architecture. So students like living there because it feels a very, it's a very traditional English town to live in. And it's also home to our architecture program, which is highly regarded and it's very competitive to get onto. Um, and that is really home to, to those subjects as well as illustration, as well as fine art. Um, and the nice thing as well is it's very central to the middle of town, so you can easily go in, you can live in the centre, and then of course you do have, what is nice is you've got easy links to the coast, um, and you've got easy links to, links to London as well. Okay, so those are our four campuses. And then, so our student union, so just to tell you a little bit about um, what you can get involved in if you come to study at UCA. Uh, so our student union goes across all four campuses and it is student led. And so all the different clubs that we have, 
they are from a demand from students. So we have such a variety of things on offer. So you can do basketball, you can do cheerleading, there's a Japanese society, there's game society. And during COVID, it's been really important because students have used the student union to connect with one another. We've done lots of you know, activities online um, and lots of, lots of things are going on so that students are not feeling isolated in those periods when they arrive to the UK and they may have to stay in accommodation on their own or, or with their housemates, they're still able to feel part of the university. So we've put a really, a lot, a lot of effort into the student union and making sure that students can access it easily and still feel part of that university environment because that's so important when you're coming to study in the UK. Okay, so a little bit more about international student support. So we do have 91 nationalities on campus. Um, and I think that's really nice if you are an international student to know that you're not going to be isolated or one of a few. Um, you know, almost 20% of our cohort each year is international. So, you know, you're part of a very large group of students. And, you know, we're, we're aware that international students need different support. So there's always gateway advisors on every campus that you can go to um, and they're available every day, Monday to Friday, and you can really talk about anything with them, whether it's a personal matter or it's something to do with your visa or it's where do I go to find something. The gateway advisors are there to really be that point of contact um, and you know they're, they're really happy to talk about anything with students. Uh, we do also have a visa compliance officer and he's really important because he will, of course, look after the visas at the university, but he does also run sessions. So when visa rules change, he will run sessions to make sure you understand how that would affect your visa, but also bring awareness of what future visas you may be able to apply to if you're looking at staying in the UK or working in the UK, or even setting up your own business um, and create, you know, carrying on your, your creative journey or applying to an MA or further education with us. Okay, so then our uni buddy scheme. So this is great actually, because obviously it's really, it's great that we're all able to talk to you um, today. And obviously you can find out a lot about the university. However, it is very different when you're able to get the perspective of a student. So the uni buddy scheme you can access by going on our website and every single program that you click on that you're interested in, if you scroll down, that you'll see an option to speak with a university representative. And that's not a member of staff, that will be a student or an ambassador who will be currently studying or will have completed the program. And you can really talk to them about anything. So if you really wanted to know what it's like Monday to Friday, what are the projects like? Where have those students gone on to? Have they done internships? Have they considered what work they'll be able to get? Um, you can just ask all of those questions. And we have a lot of Indian students you can interact with, international students. So you can ask them things, you know, like what it's like to live abroad, what it's like to live in these cities, um, what is UCA like? Um, so you can just get a better feel from a student perspective, which I think everybody likes when you're considering it and, you know, you. It, you want a different perspective to a staff member. So yeah, please do use that tool um, and interact with us. There's also our virtual open days. So obviously it's very difficult um, to travel and visit um, the campus, especially if you're abroad. So that's why we set up virtual open days, which run throughout the year. So you can go on our website now, now and see previous virtual days. And these are useful because you can see all the different facilities across the campuses. Obviously, it's great that we can tell you about them, but it's far better if you can actually see them. So all the videos are rec recorded, so you can go through, you can see the studios, you can see the different film, the different radio studios, the lecture theatres. And so you can have a better feel for the environments that you'd be learning in. And also the, the, the level of technology that we have that obviously you can use. Um, and it's really good that students can see, of, you know, I'll have access to everything I'll need to really succeed when I'm there. So go on our website, the link is there. Um, and the, web, the link is always on our website. So you can always have a look at the different campuses and see how they contrast. 
So our graduates, so we're really proud of our graduates. Obviously, our university has been running 160 years, so we've got many years of graduates, but so many of us have gone on to really exciting things. You know, we have students that work for Carvin Klein, that work for the v &A in London, that work for Vogue, that work for, you know, highly respected art architectural firms that have won BAFTAs, that have been nominated for Oscars. Um, so, you know, we're, we're really excited by everything that our graduates have achieved and continue to achieve. And I'm just going to pass over to Ross, who's just going to give you a little update on how COVID is impacting the university and what we're doing. Um, so, Ross. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much, Sid Oney. Um, And also thank you very much to our colleagues from Global University Systems for arranging today's webinar. Um, we're delighted that you're considering coming and studying with us at UCA on one of our, as Sidoni has already shown you, beautiful campuses. Um, in terms of COVID and everything that's going on, obviously it continues to evolve. Um, but I just wanted just to speak for a, just a short period, just about the kind of support that we've managed to put into place across our campuses for all of our students. Um, Essentially, the university, as you would hope, has kept the safety and well-being of our students and our staff front and centre of everything that we've done. And we're working very closely with colleagues from other institutions, Public Health England, and also with the government guidelines um, to ensure that our students are kept safe, um, but also allowing you to maximise your studies while you're with us. Um, as you'll know, probably from the press, we are expecting more updates in the coming weeks. So what I would just like to do is suggest that you do regularly look at our website. We have a very, very detailed um, coronavirus page there where you can continue to monitor all of the help, support and guidance that we're able to give. Um, Sid only mentioned earlier the Students' Union. It's an incredibly strong part of our university community. Um, and they've been offering some fantastic services to all of our students, including well-being, support, counselling and advice. Um, in addition to that, what I would like to say is obviously the, and I think Sid only mentioned it before, we have some fantastic university accommodation options. Um, naturally, if you are joining us in the new year, we'd strongly recommend that you consider those options. Um, naturally, the kind of support that we're able to give if you're actually living within the community is, is that much higher. But rest assured, um, we will continue to do everything. Uh, everything that's humanly possible to ensure that all of you get the very best levels of education, but also while staying safe and being able to make those really important networks and to be active within the community when you're on campus. So thank you very much, Sidoni. Great, thank you. Um, so before we finish, I just wanted to show you a little bit more about the type of work that our students have gone on to to produce and achieve and where they are now because obviously that's so important isn't it where where you're going to end up after your journey at UCA um, so we have some of what our graduates have gone on to here um, and Peter who now works and and styles and works in the fashion section of m &S. Um, we have here Jamie Windwas, so if you know of ASOS, which is a huge global uh, fashion company, um, he won the Future Talent Award um, and has gone on to work for them. And then we have Evelyn in the, the top right hand corner. So she was shown at Graduate Fashion Week, which is a very large event we have in London each year. And UCA is very active in that because a lot of our graduates find work through those events a lot of high profile fashion individuals will go to those events looking for graduates to start on graduate schemes with them um, to get an idea of what type of fashion is coming out on the work that they're producing. So really exhibiting yourself while you're still studying is so important. So we try and make sure we give you all the tools to do that while you're learning with us. Um, and then in the corner, so the the cats so that is an app that was produced by a student called Megan and so she produced her own app which she then went out, went on to release to Android and I know it's sold over a hundred thousand um, downloads so it's done particularly well and then so here we have uh, Angelo in the left hand corner so he's gone on to be a senior fashion assistant for 
GQ magazine, which is a very large magazine company. Um, and then in the corner we have Billy, and she did fashion with us and she exhibited a lot at the Fashion Awards in London. And she's now gone on to produce her own label, which has done extremely well. And then, so here, so in the top right hand corner, this is work done by Avona uh, on our jewelry, our jewelry program. And actually the queen has worn um, some of the work that she has now produced. She has her own company. Um, so she's gone on to do extremely well. In the left hand corner down here was actually animation work, which a student produced and then went on to, to win awards for that piece of animation in the corner. And, and then we have our leading alumni. Um, so you may know some of these. So this is actually uh, work by Grant Orchard and he created Hey Dougie. So I don't know if this will be known internationally, but um, it's hugely popular. Like if you ask any child in the UK, what is Hey Dougie, they will know. Um, so this is a, a very popular uh, animation. And then we have Where's Wally, which I would hope you may know. It's been done extremely well here. Martin Hanford studied with UCA and we have Gareth Edwards. So he's been our director on many um, extremely successful film productions, including Star Wars Rogue One, which is featured here. Mark Baker, so Peppa Pig, I think that has reached every corner of the globe and the creator of Peppa Pig studied at UCA. Uh, Will McGregor, so a very popular uh, drama here is called po Poldark and he has uh, been a director for that along with many other BBC productions. And then Dame Sandra Rhodes, she did study at UCA and she's gone on to just be globally renowned for the work she's done in fashion and you know she's done extremely well. Um, you know her corporation has employed hundreds of people and she's produced work that has been recognised um, throughout the world. And yes, yeah, so I think that was everything. So, you know, of course, um, we really would love for you to continue to engage with us if you have any questions. Make sure you use that UniBuddy scheme to find out more about the university. Um, go and have a look at our campuses on the, on the virtual uh, tours. And, you know, please do, you know, we hope to see you in the coming months, either in February or September, and, and reach out to Gus if you have any more questions about what it's like to study in the UK, studying at UCA, and then how we can support you. So thank you thank very much. Thank you so much, Sidoni. I wanted to say a big thank you to you and Ross for joining today and giving us very interesting insights with regards to the university, alumni, uh, some of the things I didn't know myself, actually. Um, and all the updates with regards to the, um, you know, COVID information, because I think that's very reassuring to our students um, to know that you guys provide full support with regards to that. Um, especially, I would strongly suggest to all of the students, you know, uh, with regards to COVID situation and arriving, uh, staying on campus, guys, is the best option because you get all of the support from the university. Um, you know, staying in, in, in a campus accommodation, you always be in the know. Um, especially in such a, you know, worldwide situation at the moment where certain things, uh, we, we just don't know what will happen. So um, I can see we have some questions um, from Dell. Uh, I need information about password tests. If you could please let us know what exactly you would need to know about password tests um, and exactly what is it the question that you are asking with regards to password test? Because I guess there is quite a lot of answers that could come here. Um, would like to know more. So Cassia, would you like Dell to go on uh, unmute and he can uh, ask the question on the meeting? No, that's fine. We can do that. Okay. And in the meanwhile, you have question from Kevin as well. Yes, I can. I can see that. Yeah. Um. Kevin would like to know more about scholarships. Um, so there are specific scholarships that we that we offer and there are also some offers at the moment. I know Sidoni, you mentioned last time that there may be some, um, something that we're looking at at the moment that you'll come back to us with regards to, um, yeah, if you would like to elaborate a little bit more on that. 
scholarships are very specific for where you are in the world. So if you're an Indian student, then there are certainly scholarships available um, and there's scholarships for students across the world. There's different scholarships you can apply to depending on where you're located. So we are updating our website. So I would urge you to go there to get the correct information and go to GAS um, because they will know exactly what scholarships you can apply for depending where you're situated. Okay, thank you very much, Sidoni. So if you can please reach out uh, to your relevant uh, uh, manager or to Dagina, and she will definitely be able to provide you more specific information and she can reach out to us as well. Uh, I am from Agus Consultants Limited India. We have few students who are not having PT or IELTS. They're interested to apply for tier four bachelor uh, or masters. Can you inform us how to apply? Um, if you, tier for bachelors or masters, if you wouldn't mind just uh, clarifying Dell on that, um, so we understand exactly what you are asking. Um, I got a conditional offer letter from UC Canterbury. I would like to know more about the campus and the city. I guess we can explore more about that. Any other? Yeah. So information that we would like to provide. So if you'd applied for Canterbury, I think the positives are that. Canterbury is a very creative town in itself and it's a beautiful architectural town. It's known for being a beautiful city to live in and it's also the largest city um, of where our four campuses are based. So if you are based there, you're lucky in that you have a lot on your doorstep and you also have an easy reach. You can go to the coast very easily. You can go to London on the train very easily. And the, the courses that are offered there, offered there are focused on the architectural, the fine art, the illustration. So all of the learners there are of a similar, you know, desire to be in a creative environment and you have access to two galleries um, and studios that you can work on. So the contacts that they have as well there with architectural firms are particularly strong. So you should be in a really creative environment to succeed, but also you have access to the capital easily if you want to get work experience or intern um, or, or you know, look at those opportunities as well. Can I just say one insight from me, guys? I, my friend got married in Canterbury and I've been to many places in the UK and I think Canterbury is one of the most beautiful towns I've ever been to. Yeah, the churches, is. the museums, the, I was literally in love. I think I've taken probably between, between 50 to 100 pictures just in Canterbury alone. So it's a very picture, picturesque place to be in. Uh, very nice, happy people. So that's what I would yeah. add on my end. I'm not sure if that's say, helpful. But. When they imagine England and they go to Canterbury, this is what they imagined. Um, yeah, yeah it, it's really, it's a beautiful town. I agree, 100%. Um, uh, hi, IELTS is mandatory. Will you consider Indian 12 st standard English marks? Um, I can see the Gina has been answering some questions here. Um, so with regards to IELTS, there are many, so just to answer to Chakri, there are many different uh, certificates that we do accept. So if you could please refer back to uh, the entry criteria, you'll be able to see all of that. You know, there, there, there's currently different um, certificates that are um, accepted, including IELTS, um, including also certain exemptions for India, but you would you would need to have a look at the the entry criteria document. If you haven't got that, please let me know. Please let the Gina know um, or your relevant um, representative, and then we will definitely be in touch. Um, can you talk more about Epsom campus? Hmm. Um, yes, sure. Yes, we can. <laughs> we can talk about all the campuses, guys. No problem. <laughs> okay, so Epsom campus. The great thing about Epson campus is the business school for creative industries has only been there a couple of years so it's brand new so when you walk in there it's it's like it's just opened um, and the areas are really large so all of the lecture theatres all of the classrooms um, are really nice learning environments and really high-tech facilities so you know you've got access to Macs you've got access to the studios um, the other subjects that are really popular there as well as the main business programs um, are some of our fashion programs as well so fashion has run for many years there so you have an area full of studios 
um, and access to all of the textile facilities that you would need. And then Epsom as a city, it's a nice community. Our, our campus is right in the center of the town. So you can walk in, into the middle in about three, four minutes. And then you also are very close to the train, which is about a 10 minute walk. And then that takes you straight to London in about 20 minutes. So it's a really convenient learning environment. And it's a very busy town to live in, um, yet it's not too big. So you, you have the best of both worlds really because you're in a nice learning environment, but you also have London on your doorstep. So you can take so, you know opportunity of it being there. And we have a lot of on-campus accommodation at Epsom. So that's really nice because there's a real buzz around the, the accommodation. There's lots of people around. Um, so yeah, Epsom campuses. Um, okay, thank you very much. We also see that there are some questions that Regina asked. Apologies, I overlooked that. And I think um, there are many students considering business related subject areas. Why would you advise students to consider UCA business school over other business schools? What potential careers would be available to students? And any specific programs you'd recommend which open many opportunities to students? So we can take that as one by one, basically. So why would we advise the students to consider UC Business School over any other business school? So our business school is different and it's so important. I, it's a great question because it's, it's really good to know the difference of studying business at UCA than studying business at York or Bristol or anywhere else. So our business school is created for individuals that want to go into the creative industries. Um, and we recognize that so much of that is on our doorstep in Epsom. And we want to be able to create that link um, you know, for students as we have those industry links in the capital. So you know, we recognize as well the demand across industries that they want students with a business mind, but also with creative ideas, because as technology improves, you're always going to need young individuals with the ideas there, which is often said is always in demand of, of Google, of Apple, of all those high profile technology companies. They want students that don't just have skills, but have the initiative and ideas that they can bring to the table. So if you have a creative mindset and you're looking at going into an industry that you know wants creative individuals, um, whether it be marketing, whether it be innovation, whether it be in leadership and management, you're bringing an additional set of skills if you study at a business school that's focused on creative industries. So we find that our students often have you know, more opportunities available to them on graduation and more interaction with industries so that they're able to make those links into graduate roles when they finish with us. Thank you very much. And so I think you've mentioned about careers. Any specific programs you would recommend which open many opportunities to students? I think, uh, as you know, I'm sure many students know, it's very easy to find a university that offers uh, an MA in business or an MA an AA in, in global marketing. And that's why these programs very much set you aside because we aim for you to leave with additional skills, not skills, not just uh, those biz that business knowledge and that business background that a lot of graduates will have on completion, but you will have that awareness of how to bring an, a, a different way of thinking and an innovative way of thinking into a company. And, and that's really what, you know, a lot of companies, especially in capitals across the world are looking for is that graduates that come with ideas that come with a level of how to take a program or idea to a next level and, and have an idea on, on brand and those types of areas. So we really focus on, on all of that because we recognize how the world is changing and how we're always going to need those young learners that have an additional layer of skills and being creative in how you you see um, companies is one of those really uh, needed skills. Thank you very much, Sidoni. And we also have a question from Kevin. Kevin, no worries, we haven't forgotten. I um, So Kevin is asking about the links to African scholarships that we offer to the international students. So yeah. 
<laughs> okay, so don't worry, Kevin, there are certainly scholarships available to African students. Um, you know, off the top of my head, I can, I can think of a couple that you can apply to. Um, and I think the best thing is to contact us directly because they can then send you a list of the scholarships that you can apply to, because it does also depend on what course you're applying to. We have some scholarships that are only available to PhD students or to MA students. Um, or students that are applying to certain courses, if it's a craft scholarship, for example. So if you send us an email saying what programme you're looking to study and where you are, then we can tell you what scholarships are available. Certainly. Hope that answered your question, Kevin. Please do let us know if you would like to know anything else. Um, Vaishnavi, I got a conditional letter for FBM at Epson, but my condition says 60% for 12 Indian examinations. As I'm studying IB, would you please tell me what are the IB points required to fill the condition? Um, I think this question, Vaishnavi, will be directly. So it, it, if you wouldn't mind also contacting the relative team with regards to the exact question that you have, and we can get admissions involved to obviously answer that question for you. We wouldn't want to give you um, the answer that may not be correct at this stage in time, because there are obviously different criteria depending on different um, uh, depending on different educational levels that you are applying for. Um, 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 Kastya, we have a question which is from uh, Sri Lekha, where she's asked, while you've talked about Epsom, she wanted specifically about MA in graphic design in, East, uh, in Epsom campus. Okay, yes. um, so Sidoni, would you be able to answer this one for us? MA in graphic design, any yes. more information about that? It's really important with our graphic design programs because we have graphic design run at different campuses. There is a difference between the programs depending on what campus you're looking at studying and what area of graphic design that focuses on. So I would really urge you to make sure to have a look at the graphic design pages for the campus that you're looking at. The graphic design program in Epson focuses on much more of the technical element and obviously you have the studios you can work on and produce graphic work. But I would also urge you to have a look at the work that's produced by students on the campus that you're looking to study at and that should be viewable on all, all the course pages because you then have a better feel of the type of student that goes to these programs and you should then be able to see oh, you know, I much prefer working on the animation side and developing the creative views for graphic design. So then you can work out which program better suits you. Thank you so much. Hope that answers your question. Um, if students would like to enter a degree which requires a portfolio, but unfortunately they don't have a portfolio, what would be your advice? Are there any other programs you'd like to recommend in this case? Yeah, and, and this is often something students worry about and we do understand you know if you're only 18 you may not have a large portfolio you can send us however if you do have work that you've produced as part of maybe your final high school certificate you know please do send us that work because every student is assessed on an individual basis and we would also always consider you know the students reasons for not having a portfolio a portfolio isn't needed for all our courses. There are a lot of really creative programs you can enter without a portfolio. Um, but if you're really keen on a certain program and you don't have a portfolio, there are still options for you. Um, and it is even if you can create a couple of pieces of work that we can have a look at, you can obviously explain it hasn't been part of your learning process in school to create this type of work, then we can consider you. So. Don't worry, just contact our admissions team and they can best advise um, the options. And just to add to that, Sidoni, would you agree that the main two courses we'd be saying that do not require portfolio, depending on obviously on the educational level, if you're going into an undergr undergraduate study and you don't feel comfortable creating a portfolio, if you don't have one, um, you could uh, enroll yourself onto a foundation program, which doesn't require a portfolio. Uh, for yeah. example, in order to then study that for a few months and then go on to an undergraduate program automatically upon successful completion, right? 
yeah, UCA would always come back to you with an option of how you could get to your end goal. So if that is doing a foundation program or a graduate diploma, then we will, of course, say you can do this and then you can, you know, do the course that you really want to study. Um, so we'll always make a way, you know, and give you an offer or, or an alternative option to what you've asked for. Um, thank you very much. We have a question from Irfan. Classes online or on campus? I guess okay. both, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, so um, blended learning is key at the moment. And I mean, UCA, this is what we're all about. We're all about our students being on campus, using our facilities. We invest so much into our facilities because a lot of our courses require you to be on campus and creating work that you cannot do in your bedroom. So we've done a lot on campus, our workshops are open much longer hours so that we can schedule students in in a safe environment using PPE. So you can still go in and use the film studios, you can still go and work on your textiles work, you can still use the printing rooms, you can use the dark rooms, but we've done that and made sure that we're keeping to, you know, the, the guidelines. So we are offering really you know a, a blended approach so you may have some courses um that you'll run online and then you might have some sessions where you'll go into into class so it varies depending on the program but it's very blended at the moment okay thank you very much Sidoni. is the quarantine services available in the university i wanted to know more about the services provided there during the pandemic um I guess yeah. Ross touched upon some of these points earlier on today, and we obviously provide the presentation and the recording, but did you, was there anything else, Sidoni, that we can yeah, add to that? We completely recognise that so many of the students are going to need to quarantine, quarantine when they come to the UK, often for 14 days. And we don't want you to feel nervous about that time because we worry that you may feel like it's a time where you'll arrive in a foreign country and feel isolated. So we are trying to do everything we can. So when students do arrive and they have to quarantine, you may be part of a quarantine bubble. If you're on on-campus accommodation, there will be other students there with you, but also there are sort of sessions going on throughout the time that you quarantine so that you can still interact with other students, you can make friends, you can interact with your lecturers um, and still start your learning and start feeling a part of the university, even though you're having to quarantine. And we're making sure that students have access so that, you know, you have all the food that you would need and you can order that service. And there's always, you know, on campus support in the accommodation so that you're getting the help that you need before you can then, you know, come on campus. And just to reiterate, and also to answer your question, Irfan, that you just asked, do you provide accommodation on campus, especially in light of the coronavirus, I, it is very, very strongly advised that you, um, you know, that you apply for the accommodation on campus, and it's certainly provided. Um, could you just reiterate, um, Sidoni, which campuses offer accommodation? Is it all four campuses? Yeah, or? Yeah, yeah, we all have accommodation, oh, yeah. but it's really competitive students love being on campus um the most rooms we have are at epsom um and we've just built a, a new block which was open in september um but really the earlier you apply the better because then you can guarantee your room um but there are options across all the campuses and the nice thing is that a lot of our campuses are central to the towns so students may not live on campus but they'll live two minutes away and they'll be right in the middle of the town which they love so there's a lot of different options and all of them are, are nice depending on where you're at um no problem we have a question from Sibel which I think has been partially answered already but let's reiterate I have a student that got conditional acceptance for MA music management she will be graduating for a very reputable university with high GPA and is extremely talented at which stage can be considered for a talent scholarship or other scholarship available for Turkey yeah absolutely I would we do offer talent scholarships as well right yeah we do and I mean if she's looking to go on to possibly do a, a PhD if she's done an MA we have scholarships specifically for PhD learners so certainly you know there are options there will be options available for her and, and scholarships to consider. Thank you um, and how many students are normally 
per class. So what's the frequency per class? And is it the same for online classes? What support is offered academically, i.e. any personal tuitioning, you know, specific tutorials, etc.? This is a really great question because I haven't touched on the fact that UCA is very different in a university in that our style of learning isn't having a hundred students in a lecture theatre with one tutor at the front. That really isn't how a lot of our students, the type of environment you'll be in. Because so many of our classes, you need to be in a workshop space. You will most likely be in a workshop space with maybe 15 other students. And we do also have technical staff, which will be in the classroom as well. And we have those there to help help you use all the facilities we have. Um, and so you'll have a technical staff in there which will help you use, say, the furnace if you are making a piece of work or how to access the dark room and how to use all of those facilities. And then you also have your lecturer staff. So it, it varies, obviously, if you're online then you may be in a class with 20 other students, but you'll have a workshop, workshop session which may only have 12 to 15 other students in. So it really varies. Some of the business programmes have a lot more students in because it'll be a, a standard lecturer, and then you'll have smaller sessions with smaller groups of students. Um, but so many of our classes, it's, it's about small class size learning and more time with the lecturer so that you can produce work and use the facilities that we have. Um, our style of learning isn't very large groups of students, often in a lecture theatre, especially if you're doing a creative subject. And with the business courses, what, and not just with the business course, with all courses, in terms of uh, personal help from the tutor, what, what would the student will be able to sort of get any additional time from the tutor if they're struggling academically or specific tutorials, as, uh, as it has been mentioned? Yeah, I mean, all of, all of the business tutors are there to be contacted. You all have direct contact with your tutors and with your teachers and also through the My UCA tool. But we also give support for English language and English writing because that is very different. So if you need support in a certain area, such as writing and writing an essay, we'll make sure that you have the support from those teachers to do that. So all of our lecturers you know, open to students contacting them directly if you want to talk through a piece of work or how to approach a piece of work. You know, your lectures are there to, to support you. Thank you. Um, so I guess we answered Irfan's question already about accommodation on campus. Question from Gracie, I got my unconditional offer letter for BA Fashion four years at UCA. What will be the next step? I can answer that question. Um, so, Gracie, your next step, Frank, once you've gotten your unconditional offer, would be uh, going through a suitability interview, uh, which will be held uh, at GAS. Um, and I'm sure your, your personal advisor who is speaking with you regarding uh, you studying at UCA will be able to advise you further. And also, of course, paying a deposit and then moving on to the CAS stage, which is obviously uh, providing your immigration documentation and then receiving your CAS for the re relevant program you applied for. Um, are students studying at UCA, will they have access to explore a different fields as well? or will they have to study a research in the particular course only, especially for business courses? Yeah, no, I the overlap is encouraged at, at UCA. So the idea is that our campuses are open plan and to also for students to cross um, in, the, in the programs as well. You know, if a lot of our students collaborate with students on different programs to produce film work, animation work, and often some of the, the most exciting work is from students working with students from other uh, programs and different BAMAs. So we encourage that completely going across to a different creative area is always encouraged. Um, and your lecturers will always support you to do that because they are all from creative backgrounds. Um, so there is always support if you're really interested in another area as well as business, you can incorporate that into your, your creative business learning. Uh, thank you very much. Um, and tell us please more about the post-study work after the degree. 
Uh, I'm not sure whether you'll be, answer to, you'll be able yeah, to answer I mean, more, on that. The post-study work visa, it's a government initiative. It's not a university initiative. So we, we are aware that there is this post-study work visa, which will be available to a lot of our students, which is fantastic. Our visa compliance officer is running sessions for our students so that they understand how to apply for this post-study work visa and who is applicable, because it's not applicable to everyone. You have to be studying at a certain point to be able to apply to it. But it does offer a really exciting opportunity for a lot of students so that they can continue their career in the UK after uh, studying at UCA. Um, so uh, thank you very much. What career support is offered to students during their studies? Is the career services department providing individual advice who can also support with CV, preparing for interviews, etc.? Yes, I haven't actually mentioned we have career departments at all the campuses and they are open door facilities. They, you can contact them and say, look, I would like a session to talk about my career. I would like you to help with my CV. I would like some help with interview skills and also getting to know the type of companies I could get involved with in maybe internship opportunities, what connections there are with the industries I'm interested in. Um, our career departments are there for that sort of reason to really help you make that transition from learning to going into you know a working environment so they are there nine till five Monday to Friday to be contacted and they'll help you with all those types of CV building applying to an internship creating a LinkedIn profile all of those things all the key things that you need to know in order to go out in the big world and I think also of course I wanted to just emphasize I think because a lot of students do ask that and we don't have that particular question here you know what support is there for students that are so there are programs that we offer that are three years that the core programs for UG undergraduate studies but there are also four-year programs guys uh, for many of the subjects that will offer the student the opportunity to work one year in the UK in the third year of their studies and then complete on the fourth year. Given that the student is obviously would find a job in the field that is similar to uh, whatever they're studying in order to do so-called work experience here. Um, and also, I guess we've had previous questions before, you know, what support would be offered there in order, you know, me arriving doing the four year program, would I receive any support in terms of finding that job in the UK for one year while I'm doing the four-year program? Yeah, so if you choose the four-year program, which is fantastic, then you will be part of a group of students who have chosen that option. And there are then sessions throughout the time to prepare you for preparing for that year. So there will be a period of time where you will be, you know, encouraged to reach out to industries across the UK because there are a lot of companies that run years work years in the UK for universities so you can apply for these initiatives that are only available to you if you're studying at a university on your on your subject so your lecturers will continue to support you to find those opportunities so that you know that you have a confirmed job for your third year uh, of study and work. Thank you very much. And we have, I guess, the last question. Um, uh, will the students be allowed to shift campus anytime during the course? And we do get that question a lot. No, <laughs> no, in one word. Um, no, because the courses are different at all the different campuses. And that's really important to understand is that we run it like that because we want a certain type of student to apply to a course at a certain campus because they're different. And our campuses really do focus on different areas. You feel it as you walk around the campus. You can feel the Epsom focuses on business. When you go to Rochester, there's a feel of everyone being into fashion. Um, and there isn't really an option for you to switch campus, no. Thank you very much. And we also have, would, question, would students receive a four years visa if they opt for a work placement year option within their undergraduate degree? Yes, yes. And, and it's really important. You can't, it's very difficult if you come to the UK with a three year visa and then all oh, suddenly decide because, oh, my friends are going to do a professional year. That's fantastic. It's very difficult to switch your visa when you're here. So 
it's really important you think about that before you apply um, so you're on the right visa to study and work. Um, thank you so much. And I think we don't have any other questions, guys. Please feel free. I will leave it for about a minute. If anyone wants to ask any more questions at all, we are still here. Um, and we will be open to any of your questions. Please remember this session will be recorded and you will be able to revert back to it. Um, are, they, are students normally paid a salary during their placement? Yeah, very good question. Um, yeah. Yes, they are. They are. <laughs> they yeah. are paid a salary. And please also remember, guys, that not only they're paid a salary, from a working perspective, um, the student would be able to work a full time for, for the, during their placement year, while also will be able to do the 20 hours part time. However, it's very, very important that, you know, when students arrive, they don't see, you guys don't see as working in the UK as the main means of supporting yourself. This should be really the additional income. Um, however, during the placement year, you'll definitely be able to work full time. And you're also allowed to do your 20 hours uh, part time, which is your normal allowance during your full stay in the UK on your visa. Um, um, uh, we have one more question. Uh, what's the difference between MA in graphic design in Epsom campus and any other campus? We can see we've got a lot of interest in MA graphic design, which is great. Yeah, so a lot of the differences on visual language and the types of because a lot of the graphic design students will use certain types of products and technology products to create that graphic design work so it is really important to have a look at MA graphic design in Epsom or in Farnham to see what those differences are look at the work that's created by students um, obviously if you're in Epsom you may view it that it's easier for you to then consider internships in London because it's a lot closer. But then also if you're in Farnham, you have more opportunities to be part of a creative environment and collaborate with students on creative subjects in a creative town. So it needs to be depending on what type of learner you are to what course you apply to. Okay, uh, I can see we have more questions. Everyone's... Uh... Uh, which is which I love to see. What is the nearest intake that can someone apply for, like right now? So I can answer your question, Kevin. The nearest intake that you can apply for is February intake. We have a number of courses that are running in February intake. It's not all of the courses that we normally would offer in September, uh, but certainly all of the main most popular courses are available in February. So you could you should apply as soon as possible if you are going to February intake. Um, the sooner the better. Um, as an international student, if I can't get accommodation on campus, will the school assist if helping me get accommodation? Uh, I'm also happy to answer that. Um, and so then you can. Um, so with regards to accommodation, um, there is you know, there is a high chance that you may be able to secure accommodation on campus if you react early enough. So if you, uh, you know, you put yourself forward and pay the accommodation deposit, which I believe is 300 pounds, right? Um, you know, there's a high chance that you will um, secure accommodation on campus. However, with regards to helping you getting your private accommodation, I don't believe, Sidoni, that there is any, unless you wanted to. Um, no. We, a lot of our students do live uh, not on campus in private accommodation and we have a accommodation team which will send you links for where you can contact individuals, good websites to use, there's lots of student websites for private accommodation, um, so where to go if you do need to look at private options. And usually those are sent also on an annual basis or intake basis in terms of suggestions where the students could look at. Yeah. Uh, because I've seen some of those as well. So we're more than happy to send that to you. Please reach out and we'll definitely pass you that information. Um, which will be the best campus for studying BA graphic design? That really depends on the type of course you want. So if you're looking at graphic design, saying Canterbury, that's going to be a lot more about the history and the design. Whereas if you're 
looking at it in Farnham, it might be a lot more about print media um, and the sort of industry fashion look at it. So you need to have a look at the pages and look at the work um, because there are differences in that BA programme. They're not the same course um, and they should attract a different learner. So make sure you look at, read all about the course and compare it so that you know which one really suits you. And you should get a feel because you can see the images of the graphic work design that's produced at those different campuses on the website. So you should then have a feeling that, oh, that's the type of work I would want to produce. I, you know, and, and that should lead you to the right program. Um, but obviously, you know, our admissions team can also advise you better depending on, on what you're interested in. You know, where's your end goal really with the course? Thank you very much, Sidoni. Um, we don't have any more questions. So uh, if anyone has any other questions, guys, please feel free to ask. Um, but I don't see any other questions coming in. So I wanted to say again, thank you, Sidoni, uh, for today. Um, as I said to everyone, the recording will be available as soon as possible. Um, so you will be able to revert back to it. I also wanted to say, uh, guys, that we are planning on running some extra um, webinars in the, in the nearest future, which your relevant managers will be letting you know the details of. And, um, you know, there'll be some interesting topics that we are planning to cover. Sidonia also mentioned that there are some subject webinars that we may be you know, receiving invites to. So uh, there is a lot of exciting things coming up. So uh, watch this space, please. And we will definitely be in touch in terms of the next details for the next webinar upcoming. Yeah, and thank you so much to Gus. It's been de a delight really to be able to interact with the students and tell you more about UCA. And I would really urge you also to go on our YouTube because we always upload videos there and you can see the type of work we create, you can see the campuses, you can see students, you can just get a really good feel for what UCA is about. And um, yeah, please do contact us, please reach out. And I hope to see a lot of you in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone and have a great afternoon. Thank you. Thank you everybody. Thank you all.